Good afternoon, everyone. Andy Jacob here with the Dot Com Magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series. Well, this is the show, ladies and gentlemen. My guest really needs no introduction at all. His name is Mr. Joshua Kreitzer. He is the founder and CEO of Channel Bakers. They are a global e-commerce agency. They are growing when everybody else is sort of compressing. They're getting bigger and stronger when other companies are trying to figure out how to move forward in their lives. They are really starting to dominate various spaces that you probably already know about. And we're going to talk about it if you don't, but wow, he has such an incredible company. And more importantly, he's got an incredible team. And we're going to talk about that team, that team centric approach that Joshua has been able to put together at Channel Bakers. Without further ado, Joshua, thank you so much for coming on the Dotcom Magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, that was a epic intro. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Joshua. Well, listen, this is, this is the second time we've had you on the show. I had to have you back after the pandemic because there's just so much to learn about what you've been able to do, sure. how you've been able to sort of steer the ship through the rising tide. But for the people who haven't heard of Channel Bakers in the unlikely event, they don't know what you're doing there. Maybe we could pull the lens back to 30,000 feet and just give them a little peer view of what's going on at the company. Sure. So just for a half a second, um, the e-commerce bit is absolutely accurate. Uh, my background, I grew up at a company called Buy.com back in the day. Um, we used to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Amazon. And then today, um, you know, Really what we focus on is, yeah, absolutely the e-commerce management, whether it's an Amazon account, Shopify, whatever it might be. But the fun bit that really um, catapulted the growth here was Amazon advertising. And uh, that for me, when I w uh, was at GoPro, I got to actually beta test that platform and just, the light bulbs went off in my head and it's like, okay, Amazon's going to go toe to toe with Google. This is going to be awesome. I want to be in the middle of that. Uh, and then looking at the other piece of that is obviously creative. So with OTT and digital video exploding, um, we've built a full-scale uh, video production team and um, we're building currently under construction a full-scale studio down the street, uh, which I'm really excited about. So um, the last tidbit I'd say is part of that uh, growth that you were talking about is, uh, did you know that even if you don't sell anything on Amazon, you could actually leverage the power of their advertising tools um, to drive traffic to your own.com. And it doesn't matter if you're, you know, an insurance company or somebody who makes a physical product that goes on the shelf. That's, um, I think, if you were to ask me the question of, you know, how did this happen? How did the growth happen? Um, that's a big part of it, for sure. I love it, Josh. It's so interesting. And when we had a pre-call to this interview, you were telling me about using the Amazon data to drive your business. And when you told me about it, I thought it was so fascinating because sort of I speak to so many people in the field and I actually didn't even know about this myself. So maybe you could share this with the viewing audience because it's just fascinating and you're right in the middle of it, which is amazing. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a topic that I know ever, it's hot for everybody. And if you read what the media says, it's like uh, apocalypse because, you know, cookies are going away. And uh, one, one article literally had a picture of Thanos snapping his fingers when the IDFA and iOS 14.5 update came out. It was like this whole apocalyptic end of the world, end of advertising. Um, and when we look at that, what's really at risk here? It's, well, it's identifying audiences uh, because the cookies are going away. And then the other pit is, a part of that is, you know, ad serving and, and how do we make sure that, you know, we serve on the right uh, sites and what have you, right? And add inventory out there. Uh, for Amazon, well, um, they've got amazing first party data. Um, you know, they have exclusive rights to Thursday night football. Um, you've got Alexa devices. They've got multiple touch points where they're shaping audience segmentation and audiences. Um, but then they also, by the way, happen to have a ton of premium ad inventory of which Again, you could be any brand, you could be any company and actually leverage it. They also have OTT offerings. And yes, they do have partnerships with Roku and Hulu, but they also have their own 
50, 6 million, you know, uh, fire sticks out there that are connected to TVs and prime video. And I, like the list goes on, right? Any brand, any company can leverage it. I even saw, um, you know, it was really excited actually, because I, I, my heart goes out to everybody who's ever owned a gym or, you know, through that pandemic. Um, but I saw a CrossFit gym ad on, uh, IMDb TV while we were watching something the other day. And I was like, yes, that's, Proof, um, proof of concept, a local gym is using Amazon OTT to promote their gym to get everybody to come back. We're good, we're safe, come on down, right? Like, it's, it's so cool what, what can be done. Um, there, I hope that wasn't too long of an answer to a short question. <laughs> no, that's a great answer because it really leads me into my next question that I've been thinking about. And again, thanks so much for coming on the show. It's a real honor to have you. You know, you're able to manage and work with you know, many of the world's largest brands, Joshua. And one thing that you are able to do with your company versus many other companies is that you really have made the commitment to be to be a data-driven company. And that's really sort of the way in which you've become what you've become. So where did that start at? How did you figure out and how early on was your commitment to be this data-driven company, where did all that come from? Well, once upon a time, there was a company called Circuit City and I was a uh, computer sales guy there. And it was started with just like audience segmentation of, okay, here comes a soccer mom with kids in tow and she wants a computer. Let's get her hooked up with a basic computer. And then let me go sell her like hard drives and a camera, right? Like it was just for me, that's how I viewed it. That was shopper behavior kind of data back then, pre-existing. Then when I got into buy.com, that's where I got to really have fun with like site metrics and all of the above. Um, and then as I continued to advance into working for manufacturer brands, well, Amazon actually was giving brands more data, sell-through data, inventory data, um, not a lot of site metric data, like impressions for your products or anything along those lines. Um, but then they opened up this tool way back in the day called Amazon Retail Analytics Premium. And there was a treasure trove of Amazon search behavior data that nobody even knew was there. And that's going all the way back. I think that was like 2009 when they launched that. And I used to pull that down and geek out because I could learn all kinds of things. I could learn what are people actually searching for. So to give you a fun one in 2017 for 36 out of 52 weeks, the number one most searched item on Amazon was adult coloring books. And the number one adult coloring book was Calm the F Down, an irreverent guide to stress relief, right? Uh, that was the number one most searched for thing through most of 2017, by the way. Uh, Q4 2020, it was AirPods Pro. Um, you know, and looking at that, we can start to identify like what colors are people clicking on and buying? Uh, what are they looking for? We helped uh, one of our clients who has a, a wearable smartwatch and they were going to kill the rose gold color. And we dug through that search data. And we're like, whoa, Tiger, hold on. <laughs> Look at all the data says, the shopper behavior data says more and more people, like more and more people are coming to Amazon to look for rose gold, let alone rose gold devices are getting more traffic and conversion, like, what are you doing? And that brand still now has a rose gold product. Um, so it's fun stuff like that. That's really um, Amazon search data in the early days um, was this like hidden file within like this um, uh, analytics tool that my uh, the brands I worked for and my clients have to pay extra for. Um, and just people don't know how to use it, right? And I was just a geek in there. Um, and with my first client, I still had the free time to go in there and build all these crazy custom uh, ad hoc reports. And then we use those reports as baseline to then scale with every new client we brought in. Uh, it was just a blast. I, I'm a, sorry, I'm geeking out, but. I love uh, it. I love it. You know, <laughs> Josh, what comes mm -hmm. through for people watching the show is your passion. And we know that great companies are founder led. The, the, the entire company is led by the founder. It's sort of, it's sort of the thing that makes companies se separate from the pack. And that's what you've been able to do with your passion. And when I listen to you, the thing that comes through is you could be selling anything. You could have any type of company, but your passion is the thing that reigns supreme and is omnipotent. And it's really amazing. Now for the people watching the show, Channel Bakers has built and managed. I'm just going to look at 2020, according to my research, almost a hundred thousand advertising campaigns across 220 or more clients 
around the globe. So this is yeah. this is massive. This is like awesome. And that's why you're passionate about what you do. And, and it's your passion that allowed you to do so much of what you do. But Josh, let's let's talk about entrepreneurship just for a second, because when people hear those numbers, they say to themselves, how did this guy with so much passion and energy and vigor mm-hmm. and, you know, everything else sort of manage the entire thing? Do you really rely on this great team that you built to really make this thing and this locomotive go? How does it all work? Yeah, 100 percent. So, you know, when there's a, any new platform or what have you, um, there's a lot of exploration. There's a lot of coming up with processes and all of the above. Right. Um, and yeah, because I was uh, st- in my startup phase, right. I had no investors. I, and we, to this day, we still have no debt, but no investors, but like it was in the black from day one. So I really leveraged um, f- fresh out of college talent. And we built this like really epic training system where we can literally bring somebody who just got a marketing degree or not, maybe a business administration degree, um, or we literally have some folks that started here when they were in high school um, to get some credits and are still with us to this day. The training system that we built because of all the processes in the beginning is really how we built and scaled. Um, and what I think, you know, I'm in this, you know, this room, my hope is to leave the world a little better for having been here. The new mission for me is creating leaders of tomorrow. And all of this young talent um, blew my mind with the way that they were doing things differently than even how I had been going about it, right? Um, And for me, that is where the scale came in and how 100,000, that was just last year's campaigns, by the way, uh, right? Uh, Against a a hundred and some odd million dollar ad spend. But it was, it's them. It's the the team that, number one, we look for... um, quality of character as well as obviously some skill, right? And a passion for learning and a passion for people. Um, And if those boxes are checked for the most part, um, yeah, you're in. And then we, then we put you through our training and then you're like, you're out there. Um, And from there, you know, the last room that we were in when we met Andy was the uh, George Lucas room. And the quote on that wall was everybody's got talent. It's just a matter of moving around a little bit until you discover what it is. Um, that's what I love about what we've been able to do here, because if they come in and maybe they, you know, um, maybe they show signs that they like data and geeking out on data all day, rather than being on a client call or what have you, then they may go down an analytics path and become an analyst. Uh, if they're super extroverted and outgoing and charismatic and all the things like those are perfect, you know, client facing folks. Right. Um, so it's been fun scaling from that standpoint, for sure. Makes sense. And, you know, you grew your workforce dramatically through 2020 during the pandemic. Really, you know, you've achieved incredible year over year growth in each of of your key markets. And, you know, you've you've accomplished many regional expansion goals. But I want to talk to you about measurability, because I know you're the king. I could call you the king of measurability. <laughs> I, I mean, this this whole shift to on, online shopping has really accelerated the need for brands to transform themselves in, in, in a certain way, because their, their go-to market strategy and overall brand experience, Joshua, really needs to be measured. And that's sort of the key behind the whole thing. And that's how you've built your company. So let's Let's touch on that and talk about the the importance of that for the people watching the show. Um, wow. Do you have six hours? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, you know, I think uh, it's it's been an interesting landscape. And when I say that, I mean retail in general. And measurability has been one of those big challenges. Um, and you know, for us, one of the things that I built the company on, and, and it's one of the things to... Um, that my team goes like, oh God, do I really have to do insights and action items? Okay. I know that that's a pain point. Like we've got a platform that now, you know, produces charts and graphs and all of the above, but what the real value is, is the insights behind the data, right? It's the why and what should you do about it, right? And so while measurability, you're absolutely right, is um, really important, guiding the client, guiding the brand, guiding the advertiser, um, on what they could be doing next, what are some other things that are working for other clients and so forth? Yeah, is b- what I value more and what I know my client base values more are insights and action items versus just, all right, your stats went this way or that way, right? Uh, the other piece when I say this whole retail landscape, well, Amazon did pioneer the way 
uh, providing more and more data to the brands that engage with them to sell their products on Amazon site, whereas other retailers, even to this day, are still being, being very close to this, like, no, we're not going to tell you those things, right? Um, there are some, you know, areas where all of the brand uh, retailers align in things like market share. They don't want to release that because they want to announce to the street what their category growth was for televisions or for whatever it might be, right? So there's things that, you know, from a retail landscape and the landscape and the mindset of, of, of measurability that Amazon really did pioneer the way, and and everybody else is now catching up. Let's say uh, there uh, again. Sorry for a long-winded answer. Or no short, you know, no short listen, answers. Again, <laughs> it's, it's, it's great because you're so deep into it and you understand it so well. And you take something that potentially can be so complex and you're able to simplify it, not only for your team, but for your clients as well. And, you know, I know last year you were awarded the Internet Marketer of the Year Award by the Internet Marketing Association. So congratulations on that. And obviously, anybody or any brand, any large brand certainly needs to reach out to your organization to find out how they can improve by using your data-driven approach and certainly using the, the Amazon data that, that you really have a firm grasp on and are leading the way throughout the world to help companies use that Amazon data to improve their ROI and their companies. But you mentioned something to me a little bit earlier, Joshua, that I thought was very, very fascinating. I wanted to bring the wagon back a little bit. You spoke about sort of mentorship. You talk about building the next group of great entrepreneurs, and that seems to be now a passion of yours as well as continuing to build your company. So let's talk about that because I love to hear that. It resonates so much for me and I know it's a passion of yours. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> again, you got six hours. Um, you know, I think, you know, Simon Sinek says, and, and uh, Simon Sinek said this, right? He said, it doesn't matter if you're an employee or you're out there trying to do it on your own. You could be an entrepreneur. It doesn't You can be an entrepreneurial employee, right? And for my career, uh, I, 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 it's so funny because on Facebook, it just popped up the other day. Uh, I posted in 2009, I'm an employee stuck in, uh, no, I'm an entrepreneur stuck in an employee's career. Um, and Simon Sinek would argue that against that as I, I've always been entrepreneurial, right? Um, and that's where I love um, about what we're trying to do here is create leaders um, and the leadership elements of um, you know, being influential, the, the lost art of conversation, um, genuinely caring about other people, being val add value forward first, like minded. Um, all of that is what does get me out of bed in the morning. Um, and that's been the fun part. I was literally just having a, a conversation with an Amazon executive right before jumping on here. And we we're having some fun. And he goes, like, what do you think is like the coolest thing that you think you've done out of all of this? And I was like, I had no idea we were going to be building like really amazing marketers and leaders and I've got a guy that was like a president of a fraternity is now like running a team of like 12, 13 people. And he got to take his leadership skills that he picked up while in college and apply them to the real world, right? Like that for me is what gets me out of bed in the morning. And the more of that that we can do, uh, the more excited I get. And we have a whole batch. I say a batch, but we have like 120 plus new employees from March, 2020 to now um, and I haven't even gotten a chance to like meet them eyeball to eyeball or invest in them yet or, right. So I'm doing my best these days to like, just put video content out for the team so they get to know me because it's not here. Uh, but that's really my new passion is, is, is taking really awesome young talent and, um, turning them into the leaders of tomorrow. I love it, Joshua. It's so beautiful. It really is. So let's, let's take a minute and have some fun here because, I know you love to have fun. And one of your passions is, you know, to have fun while you're building, you know, a world-class company. And let's, let's take a minute perhaps and not only talk to those new employees that you haven't, you know, had a chance to get eyeballs on, you know, directly or, and maybe talk to some of the entrepreneurs watching the show and, and maybe share with them sort of what you think about in terms of, customer satisfaction, what you think about in terms of why that in customer is so important, what you think about Joshua in terms of doing the greatest job you can to make your company and the people watching the shows 
company get so many screaming fans that their company just goes like a hockey step stick curve up into the moon? All right. So um, one of my favorite topics uh, right across the hall, the hall from me, I'm looking at it right now is the Walt Disney conference room. And I dedicated it to Walt, not just because I'm a Disney fanboy, but you know, when I think of these amazing businesses that exist, Apple, Amazon, they fought for the first trillion dollar valuation, right? Um, and obviously Disney's legacy. What was the key ingredient, right? What's the number one thing that they all obsessed over to get to where they are? And it was customer experience, 100%, right? And my team knows, like we are known in our industry for having like this white glove level of service that we don't upcharge for it or what have you, right? We really just want to help them deliver. And even the call room that I'm in, I built six of these call rooms with these quotes on the walls. The call rooms were built with the mindset that, I don't know, let's have fun with this. Have you ever been on a tech support call and you've got all this techno frustration and you hear all the noise in the background and all of that, ah, right? What if like my team out there throughout the office in our open office environment is having a lot of fun and there's high fives happening and buzz and your brand for whatever reason is having a really bad day. And when it comes to the person on the other end of the phone, it's not about the company, it's about the person, right? Who's having a bad day. They don't want to hear any of that, right? So I built these call rooms centered on uh, customer experience. I want them to have in a nice, quiet environment. And then I put the quotes on the walls to remind my team that when they get into that room and they're about to have that discussion and that conversation, they need to be really others-minded focused. Focus on the person, right? This one's a fun one. Um, my hope is to leave the world a little better for having been here. Um, the one across the hallway, my PT Barnum room is the noblest art of, is that of making others happy. Uh, my Helen Keller room is alone we could do so little, but together we could do so much. The Einstein room next door is try not to become a man of uh, success, but rather a man of value. But like I'm trying to take these quotes that remind my team to be others minded, other people minded. And the call rooms are a shining example of like, I invested some <laughs> solid dollars into making these rooms available. The builder of this building and the tenant improvements didn't want to do any of my ideas. Uh, and I was like, no, that must be, that's customer, ex it's customer experience. The client must have a great experience. And they don't want to hear all the noise in the background. Um, so there, there's my two cents. I love on it, Joshua. Experience. I mean, you know, I, mean <laughs> I, I love it so much. You know, what you're really giving here, you know, is, is, a class that could be given at Harvard to the MBA students. I mean, for the people watching the show, <laughs> when you're at Harvard, they're going to have the professors and the students, and they're going to do case studies, and they're going to talk about different things. And one of the things they'll, they'll hopefully talk about is customer experience. But man, there's nothing like getting it on the ground. There's nothing like hearing it from a real entrepreneur that's actually done it versus some professor inside a classroom that maybe hasn't done it for 20 years. So it's this type of passion and this type of thought process that Joshua has that really has been able to differentiate his company from the others and has allowed him to do really interesting things. Like I know you're introducing high quality video into Amazon search right now. So that's sort of an interesting thing that comes from this type of sort of enthusiastic thinking. So for the entrepreneurs watching the show, uh, Josh, that maybe they're watching you and they're saying, you know, wow, you know, he, he's got this great company. He's got it going on, but here I am. I'm a technologist. Maybe I've got a startup, maybe things aren't going as well as maybe I hope that they would be. Maybe I hit a pothole in the road. Maybe I hit a roadblock. And I'm an entrepreneur and I have never experienced how to get around these things before. And maybe they throw their hands up in the air, Joshua, and they're kind of freaking out a little bit like they don't know what to do. Maybe you can give them some insight, you know, from your perspective as a fellow entrepreneur about what it takes to get through those tough times. And, you know, someone once said to me, if you're not facing tough times once in a while, you're not pushing hard enough. So maybe you could give a little motivation to those entrepreneurs watching the show that are watching you that want a little inspiration from your experience. All right. Um, I like talking about wins a lot um, and not, you know, it's just, I like talking about wins. Number one, win your morning, win your day, right? Uh, as an entrepreneur, 
for you and, and certainly here being in a uh, professional services business, like I go from one phone call and it was like epic and awesome. And then I go to the next phone call and it was like, just God awful. The sky is falling. And then the next phone call, it's like, I'm in front of a client. I got to put a smile on and I have to be like genuine and authentic in my love for them and gratitude for their service and like their business. I mean, and the like, guy, ah, right. So that's an emotional roller coaster on a daily basis. Um, so, you know, when your morning, when your day is really important to me, um, for me, it's exercise, it's riding a bike. Um, I love music and I, I love listening to like, um, podcasts like this. Um, and so that's kind of how I start my day. Then throughout the day, um, you know, for me, I'll jump in, you know, I'll jump in the elevator, go downstairs, throw on my AirPods and turn on one of my like, um, eye of the tiger type jams and walk the parking lot, just breathe. Uh, maybe jump in the car and just yell at the top of my lungs and then get back out of camp. Could now let's go. Um, right. It's, it's a lot of that. Um, but I think one of the things that I like um, encouraging my own team to do is document, like I don't journal like a traditional journal, like, hi, my day was cool. Okay. And right. Uh, I really focus on like, what wins did I have? Like the huge wins, they could be small wins and daily wins is what I try to document. Um, even if they're not um, massive, like it might've been, you know, I don't, anything could have been anything. Um, I made the barista at Starbucks smile today and like, they looked like they were having a bad day. Like that was cool. Right. Uh, where this came into play and how I've leveraged this concept of daily wins um, is when I am having those challenging days, uh, I can turn to my daily wins and remind myself that, no, it's, this, it's cool. You're good. Uh, when I was at GrowPro, it was a very, it was a nightmare experience for me. And I was having to turn to my daily wins just to go, okay, they don't see my value, but just because they don't see my value doesn't mean I'm not valuable. Right. And I have my daily wins to back that up. When, um, you know, after I got fired from GoPro, which was the start of my entrepreneurial journey, which is a blessing in disguise. Um, you know, I was turning to my daily wins just so I could rewrite resumes and submit them for different job positions. So I had enough wins documented that I was like, okay, I have a win for that job all cool. And I, you know, like, and I was just submitting resumes and then I go jump on my bike. Right. Um, and hope somebody would call me. So daily wins is the way that I like, it's my, it's like my dose of mental health medicine, if you will. Right. Um, thinking about, Oh, that's right. Things are awesome. It's really not that bad. And the faster you can pull yourself out of that, myopic negative land, uh, space, then that, that's the faster you're going to be able to rebound and get back into your creative entrepreneurial space, right? That's when you can bounce right back into that. And then sometimes it's okay to have rose colored glasses. And that's where my most creative ideas come from. So there, that's kind of my tip for the day. I love uh, daily it, wins. I love <laughs> it. It makes all the sense in the world. Daily wins. I mean, I love that. I'm going to take that and incorporate that into my own life. And for the people from Channel Bakers watching the show, incorporate the daily wins into your life. And for the entrepreneurs watching the show, do the same as well, because it just makes all the sense in the world. And one thing that was very fascinating, and I know that you've only sliced out a certain amount of time. I want to indulge myself with one more question is you mentioned that when you got fired from a past job at GoPro, you know, when you look back on it now, that maybe it would have, that maybe was the best day of your life because it put you on a path to something much greater and different. So isn't that interesting, Josh, that when you think about daily wins, you think about sort of the way in which the world works. I mean, b behind your, you know, left shoulder, you have something that says, my hope is to leave the world a little better for having been there. And when you have this positive mental attitude and you look back at things like the firing of GoPro and you say to yourself, wow, now I can see why that happened. Now I can see why that was part of my journey because here I am now. And without that happening, I wouldn't be here. That's such a positive way to live and you're known for that. And that's why you're a great, great leader. So my final question uh, and again, thank you for indulging me with this time. And this has just been fascinating. And, and believe me, Josh, you write the book called Daily Wins. I'll be the first one to buy it as long as you autograph it for me. What well, just real want? quick, disclaimer, that's not my book. It was actually John Maxwell, where I got the idea from way back in the day. I think the book that was in was Today Matters. So I, like, just so we're clear, I didn't come up with Daily Wins on my own. All right. I love it. All right. Well, you're carrying it forward. Okay. You're carrying it forward. You're carrying Maxwell's torch forward. So perfect. All right. so what question, is your sorry. why? Joshua, uh, what is your why? What's your why? Why do you get up? What gets you going in the morning? What is the deal? What's the, what's the either spiritual energy, 
the the cosmic look, the 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 spatial look, whatever you want to call it. Why do you get up in the morning and why do you do what you do, Joshua? Uh, and if you uh, ever watched the Simon Snag Golden Circle TED Talk, he asked that question: uh, Why do you get out of bed in the morning, and why should anybody care? Right? Uh, and the why should anybody care part is what really makes you focus on how you're adding value to the world, right? Um, you know, our core company's core tenets, the first thing you see when you walk through the front door here, it's we exist to help people, our audience is everyone we meet. And um, for those of you that are out there pursuing a title or you're pursuing some base pay, salary, six figure number, whatever that might be, like I was that guy too. And the GoPro experience was actually my humbling. Um, and when I got back out on my bike, I started to think about, and my bike is my happy, one of my happy places. But um, I started to think about like, what really fulfills me? Like, what do I really want to do? Like, what, 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 what's my purpose, right? And it got back to, you know, growing up, I grew up with an amazing um, mother. She literally went out into the world and her whole goal in life was to make people feel special. Uh, and even if that's as small as like turning a frown upside down, like that little barista example I gave you, right? Um, and I think about like how highly people think of my mom and growing up as a kid, they were like, do you know how lucky you are to be your mom's son, right? Like, I thought about that and I thought about like how much I've ingrained that mentality into my life and how that's been really fulfilling for me. But I kind of deviated from it to be completely straightforward. I got really into my title and pursuing my hockey stick career growth, right? Um, that firing from GoPro and that humbling really got me back to that core value of what gets me out of bed in the morning. It's like, I genuinely just want to go be light in the world and make people smile. Um, whether it's the building guy here that <laughs> helped me because I locked myself out of the office again and left my badge on my desk. Right. And even, um, even Ruben, I love him. He's great. Um, I'm always asking him about his family, his kids. He's so passionate about his grandkids. Right. And so I'm always talking to him about his grandkids. And I know that that lights him up and gets him excited. Right. That is why I get about out of bed in the morning. Like I literally just love being able to put smiles on people's face and, faces and carry my mom's baton of making people feel special. I like carrying that forward. And I'm look hypocrite to some degree. I have bad days, no doubt. Right. But that for a fact is what I try to do with each day, whether I'm awesome at it or not, that's the goal. Right. And how I engage other human beings is one with which I want to try to put a smile on their face. I love it, Joshua Kreitzer. You've, you've really, really put it together for the entrepreneurs watching the show. Rewind this a couple times. Listen to the <laughs> whole thing because there's really some gems here. Now, obviously, besides being this powerhouse of a, of a spiritual, spiritual being and this powerhouse of a positive mental attitude that Joshua has, there is no doubt. Don't make make no mistake about it that Joshua is also very demanding because in order to build a business like this, you have to be. And and maybe we'll save that for our next interview about, you know, how we how we approach being a demanding CEO uh, with the kindness and, and the compassion that you have, because that's an interesting sort of dynamic that that you're known for and have become known for and really are leading the way with Joshua. So I wanted to take a minute just to thank you so much for coming on the .com Magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series. This has been really, really awesome. And I'm just so honored to have you on the show and, and count you as a friend of mine, Joshua. You're a great guy. Well, thanks, Andy. That's, that's awesome. 